Praise the Lord and happy Sunday. Thank you for tuning in to Bethesda Alive broadcast. You could have been anywhere on this morning, but you've chose to praise the Lord and celebrate his holy name with us on today. My name is Sister D. I will be coming to you reading out of Psalms 111, 1 through 5 for your hearing. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation, the works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endure forever. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He hath given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. May God add a blessing and a, re a blessing to the hearer and the reader of his word. Now, if we can bow our heads and go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you saying thank you. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being our Savior. Thank you for being King of King and Lord of Lord. We come before you knowing that you are the great I am. We come before you humbly bowing our heads knowing that you are the God that hears us. We come before you knowing that you are the God that heals, delivers, sanctified, and set free. We come before you knowing, Lord God, that it is you that give power. It is you that gives strength, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for being our protection. We thank you, Lord God, for being our strong tower. We thank you, Lord God, for being our present help in this time of trouble, Lord God. We come before you, Lord, knowing, Lord God, that nothing surprises you, Lord God. That you are all glory, all knowing, all powerful, omnipresent God. Even in this time of unrest, Lord God, we find rest in you, Lord God. You are the king. You are the prince of peace, Lord God. We come before you, Lord God, asking you to forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us for all of our unrighteousness and cleanse us, Lord God. And Lord God, as you go before us to make the crooked way straight, Lord God, let us stand right before you, Lord God. Let us come before you, Lord God, with clean hands and a pure heart in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we come before you, Lord God, knowing that we can't do anything without your power, Lord God. Even in this time, Lord God, we've come from a pandemic, Lord God, to a protest, Lord God. But you remind us, Lord God, that your wind blow on Pentecost, Lord God. And Lord God, as your wind continue to blow, Lord God, blow this way, Lord God. Blow your power, Lord God. Endow us with your dutiness power, Lord God. Lord God, to tear down the every evil word, Lord God, that's rise up against your people, Lord God. We come before you, Lord God, saying thank you, Lord God, for giving us the strength, Lord God. Lord God, we come before you, Lord God, asking you to raise up the bow down head in the name of Jesus. We come before you, Lord God, and if anyone that's watching this broadcast, Lord God, that don't know you, Lord God, I ask you to visit them on this day, Lord God. Let them know, Lord God, that you are there, Lord God, that you have never left or forsaken us, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord God, saying thank you again. Thank you, Lord God, for extending your grace to us, Lord God, for extending your mercy to us, Lord God. Lord God, even in this unjust world, Lord God, we know that you are just, Lord God. You are a just God, Lord God, and you do everything fair, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God. We come before you, Lord God. Touch the seniors right now on this in this time, Lord God. Be with them, Lord God, as you have been with them so, thus far, Lord God. We come before you, Lord God, asking you that you will bring the families together, Lord God. That you will bring unity together, Lord God, in this season, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we know, Lord God, that all souls matter to you in the name of Jesus. And that you are getting us ready, Lord God. For on that glorious day when you rapture us up out of here, Lord God. Lord God, let us keep our lamps filled with your oil, Lord God. Let us not be foolish in this season, Lord God. But let us seek your face in all that we do in the name of Jesus. Lord God, let every song go forth, Lord God, to be pleasing in your sight, Lord God. Let the word that go forth on today, Lord God, be pleasing in your sight, Lord God. We bless the man of God of this house, Lord God. Continue to cover him. Protect him, Lord God. Give him your wisdom, Lord God. 
Give him your understanding and knowledge, Lord God, as he rightly divides your word, Lord God. Protect him and his family, Lord God. And every elder and minister and every lay person named in this place, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God. We give you glory on high, Lord God. We thank you for being a mighty God. We thank you for being a good God. We thank you, Lord God, because we can trust in you, Lord God. And you have never left us nor forsaken us. We give you the glory. We give you the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Bethesda. We're so grateful that God calls us friends. We're so grateful that he's mindful of us. Hallelujah. of me that you hear me when I call is it true that you are thinking of me how you love me it's amazing who am I am who am I that you are mindful
And because we're friends, we know that he's a way maker on this morning. Hallelujah. He makes ways out of no ways. Hallelujah. He provides for us. He keeps us. And we are grateful this morning for him being a way maker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. You
feeling to work again. You never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God. He is more than you could ever need. He's more than the eye could see. I don't deserve his love, but he's always been there for me. You see, Jesus met me when I was at my lowest. And if you don't know Jesus, know this. He is the greatest example of generosity this world of greed has ever seen. And when Jesus hit the scene, he changed the scenery and met diversity with serenity. If you're looking for peace, he offers plenty. Jesus was and Jesus will forever be king. And when the angels sing, they sing of the grace that was displayed for sinners like me. I can't explain him and I can't describe him. And if I could, he wouldn't be Jesus because you can't explain eternity and you can't comprehend the galaxies. But it was the loving hands of Jesus who spun them into existence and created man knowing he would go to the cross to pay our sentence. There was a certificate of judgment with a period after the sentence and we were sentenced to death long before he said it is finished. He is a father to the orphan, a shelter for the homeless, a hiding place for the abused and an anchor for our storms. He stormed the gates of hell and came out on top and the power of his gospel cannot be stopped. Even when the world tries, and they try a lot. He traded places with Barabbas and became the catalyst of missions across the world covering every portion of the atlas. If you're in need of rest, I know of a mattress. If you don't know Jesus, your future is tragic, but he gladly embraced tragedy so we could live in his presence of majesty. His presence is presence, and it's his presence that presents preciousness to a world of peasants. He is far from pretentious, but still loves those who are. He is the light of the world and hung the stars. He brings the dead to life and delivers life to the dead. He took a crown of thorns on his head so we could put crowns at his feet, and I can't wait until I get to kiss his feet that were nailed to a cross for me and for you and for every person around the world. He loves the world and I love his word because the word became flesh and in his flesh he demonstrated the word to the world. He is an example to every boy and every girl. He is a lover of black people. He is a lover of white people. He is a lover of the unchurched and the assembly under the steeple. He doesn't see the believers failures but still takes time to celebrate their faithfulness. It's the power of the spirit that enables us and gives us boldness when the world labels us and if you want to label me please call me a Jesus freak if that freaks you out good because it's better to be good with God than to fight being misunderstood by a world that could never understand so let it be understood that I don't worship man we worship Jesus and although he doesn't need us he still sees us and pleads with us to run to the cross where he bled for us his heart bleeds for us his heart grieves for us but still graciously grants us a pardon for our treason in a season where the world tries to explain away the work of the spirit with human reasoning there is a reason they can't because the spirit is like the wind and the wind cannot be seen but loved is the one who believes without seeing the unseen I'm telling you today that Jesus is something he's something more He's something great, and if you want to know him, you don't have to wait. He stands at the narrow path with a key to the gate, and you only have to reach out and embrace his grace. I don't care who's president. I have a king who is always present. I don't care who holds musical celebrity. The voice of the Lord will always be the sweetest melody. I don't care who owns the riches of the globe. My Jesus holds more wealth than one ruby on his robe. I don't care who is the strongest or the fastest. Nothing matches the creator of the universe and his immortal, infinite status. I don't care about religious leaders who died and stayed dead. I'll only worship the one who conquered death and wears a crown on his head. His name is Jesus, and I'm telling you, he's something. He was faithful yesterday, and he is faithful today. I can feel his presence whenever I pray. And when the time comes for me to fade away, I'll remember the day I heard him say, My name is Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Truly, God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. We thank the Lord for his goodness and mercy. And I am Pastor Tobias Brookins. For those of you who are watching on social media who are just tuning in, and to all of the Bethesda family, we say praise the Lord to you. And this is Lady Nett, who is with me this morning. We're going to be sharing in the word of God. But before we do that, though, this is First Sunday. And first Sunday is a time of first. It's a time to start over again. It's a time to reset. It's a time to really bring your first fruit to God, but also 
the best of all that has come from your ground. And so as you're sowing your tithe and offering, this is also a time for you to sow your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. That's your reasonable service. And so we want to have a time of communion right now. And we did take communion during Pentecost, but we wanted to keep our custom of first Sunday because I believe that the Lord blesses you when you put him first. And if we don't have a time of reflection each month, just to remind us that he's first and that there is no second. He says, I am the Lord thy God who healed thee. And so it's important that we always do that. So at this time, I want to bring to your attention that when we take communion, this is the body of our Lord and this is the blood of our Savior. And although it comes in this little package, it's really symbolic of the package that God came in. He wrapped himself in flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld him as the only begotten of the Father. At this time, I'd like to have a word of prayer for those of you who have lost loved ones. Sister Lou Wright lost her stepdad. Amen. There's a few others that are in the hospital right now. A couple of people in hospice care. Sister Cara Dunn passed away. One of the senior members over at Champion Center, sweet woman of God, came to us and wanted to strengthen her faith. And the Lord blessed us with her for that time and allowed her to hear the gospel, the truth of the living word. And she's transitioned on. So we want to have a word of prayer there. And of course, there is unrest around this country and we want to say peace be still we want to say now it's time to our young and old now that we have seen the horrors of reality that are taking place in our country is now for us now as christians though to have the right response and the right response is prayer and the right response is using our giftings in whatever field that we've been called into for the good of the body of Christ and all men. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear gracious Father, we bless you and glorify you for you're a good God, you're a wonderful God, you're a sovereign God. And Lord, we come pushing out there that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So Lord, we ask that you be king in all matters of man. You said the heart of the king is in your hands. So dear Lord God, you are sovereign above all powers. You put all rulers, darkness, all up under your feet. And so, dear Lord God, we trust you right now. Heal our nation, God. We come asking, Lord, that you would work behind the scenes and begin to change the hearts of men. And dear Lord God, cause us to be a people that begin to cry back out to you. Many are crying in the streets, Lord, for justice. Many are calling for new laws. Many are calling for new policy. But we call to you, God. For you said, if my people who are called by your name would humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways, that you would hear from heaven. So hear us now, God. We need you now more than ever. Hallelujah. Just bring us, dear Lord God, to a place of peace in this nation where all men would see that they were created equal, God. And that we would be a beacon of light and of hope in the earth realm. We pray for those who have lost loved ones during this time. We pray for those who are sick and shut in during this time. We pray for those who have concerns in their family, concerns in their body, concerns in their finance, concern, dear Lord God, in their community. We just ask that you heal right now, God. You're the God of peace. You said you're the Prince of Peace. So, dear Lord God, we call on your name now. Now, Lord, we repent of our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness from the crown of our head to the sole of our foot. We say that there's no good in us except you. Our flesh is desperately wicked, dear Lord God, so we push it back. We decrease so you increase. Have your way in the lives of your people. Bless marriages, dear Lord God. Bless the widow, dear Lord God. Right now, hold her up. Hold him up right now in the matchless name of Jesus. And we trust you for the complete victory. Now, dear Lord God, prepare us for communion. Make your will known as never before. We pray over the body and we pray over the blood for both are blessed forever. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have a portion, you may peel back the first portion at this time and take the body of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And now you can peel back the second layer. You may take it at this time. Glory, God. Glory, Jesus. Well, God bless all of you for some of you are giving your offering at this time. And I do want to make it clear that um, I, I received, a, you know, just a, a little report. Some were wondering about um, why was there such a increase in emphasis in giving, babe? And I was just pointing out to them that through this shutdown that many people who are used, it's our culture to come to church. And so people typically give when they come to church. Mm -hmm and to let them know that we wanna make sure that when the church doors open back up, yeah. that we still have a beautiful facility, that we still have a place that they can call home. Yeah. And so I want you to give as unto the Lord. I promise you, those who have been up under the ministry, some of them have actually said, Pastor, you don't talk about it enough, actually, mm -hmm. um, because we don't do any of this for money, because guess what? I don't know if you got the memo or not, but you can't take none of this with you. The only thing you can take with you is your soul, your cars, your houses, your fancy clothes, whatever it is, guess what? There's a lot of fancy people that were shocked last week when those windows busted open and all of the fancy stuff was running down the street. So just like that, it can all be gone. But guess what? Only what you do for Christ will last. And so we thank the Lord for you giving this morning. And can I also say that we lead by example? Yes, yes. You, 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 you are a giver. I am a giver. Our, our family gives. Yes, we, we are givers. We are givers. So don't think that we're sitting back on the bayou somewhere. No, no, no. We, we give as unto the Lord. Um, and, and trust him just as you all trust him. We also trust him. Um, I would like to bring your attention just in the way of announcement before I get to the word that we did do our COVID-19 training, which is mandated by the CDC in the state of California. We did that last Thursday and it has been published on our YouTube channel. Uh, the Bethesda Church's YouTube channel. Every worker, every volunteer, anyone serving in ministry will have to go through that training before we open up. Or when we do open up, you won't be able to serve. That is a mandate by the state. So if you would, if you do serve with Champion Center Church or Bethesda Church or Bethesda Southeast, please go to that YouTube um, channel. Uh, our YouTube channel and listen to the service training and complete the assessment that is attached to it. Um, and once the office has a record that you have completed that training, then we will be able to check your name off as someone who's available to pray for people, to sing, to um, the flag ministry, teachers. Um, I believe we have something like 50 people on that um, that uh, call though, so that's a, a blessing. But by the way, I want every member to go through that. So if you can make it to youtube.com forward slash um, B2 experience, it'll bring up our Bethesda Churches page and the training was um, excellent. We'll be pushing out when the next trainings are coming up. Uh, we, we don't wanna open and people get sick. We wanna right. make sure everyone is safe. All right, and so we've been allowed by the state 25% of our church building capacity to be opened up. Um, and when we do open up, as of right now, it will be, sorry about that, it will be by registration. So you'll go on and you'll say, yes, I'm coming to 830 service, and then there'll be a full on, you'll be able to register so that we know that you're coming because the CDC is also mandating that we know everyone who comes in and are able to trace and track mm -hmm. if someone gets sick. All right. I've talked with some of the other religious leaders in the community. They have some different things they're doing. I know across town, some are doing a parking lot service as well as online. We have chosen that when we do open, that we will open and we probably will open first with one service and then we'll roll out and with 500 members collectively through the Bethesda churches, that's a lot of services that will need to be opened up in order for everyone to have access. So, um, we, we want you to just be aware of that. And I also want to speak to, just because it's, it's on my heart, there's a lot of stinking thinking out there uh, by other ministries, uh, other pastors, um, 
and being as um, as diplomatic as I can say, it's a shame to ever want the church doors closed. So anybody who's putting that out there, you know, that, that we should be just happy with watching on social media, children of God, I want you to know that's not God's will. That's not his will. He said we should not forsake the assembling of ourself. That's, that's a universal term. Assembling meaning coming together. So that's in his word. So anybody who's putting that out there that, you know, I know uh, they, you know, I get these things, babe. It, it came through. The man was talking about, I don't care. Jesus going to have to tell me to open up. You ain't got to be all demonstrative about that. You should want the house of God opened up. So please, please don't listen to any of them. Those of you who are under my, to, we want the church opened up. We just want to be safe and we will do everything. Bethesda's policy is safety first. It has always been that policy. And so let me give you another example. I'm going to get into the word, but let me give you another example. If somebody got sick, and, and some of the people who know Bethesda know this, we've had people that have had like almost an asthma attack while in church. Mm -hmm. We get around and pray for them, but guess who's first there? The first responder. That's right. We always make room for our nurses, our nurses' guild, to have access to them, mm -hmm. to provide care for them first. We, we don't ever just, oh, we just going to pray. No, no, no. We, we praying, but we let the professional who is anointed by God, by the way. We forget about that. Right. The nurse is anointed by God and, and, and to come in. So we're always going to put safety first. Um, anyway, I want you to like and share. I'm looking um, on the quick line, and only 77 are on. That's a shame before God. You better like and share. Amen. If you want to be saved this week, like and share. That's the way God want to bless you. Like and share. So let's get to the word of God, babe. You ready? I'm ready? Let's do it. Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. The new series is called Who's Next? So those of you who are watching via social media, type it in the screen. Who's next? Who's next? Who's next? And then I want you to answer that question. What's the answer to the question? I'm next. <laughs> the answer to the question is I'm next. This series, we're going to um, carry this series through the summer, is going to look at supernatural miracles throughout scripture. And I want you to feel connected because I want to build your faith up to let you know that if God did it before, he most certainly can do it again. Yeah. I just felt a shift right there. If God did it before, he can do it again. And so in Exodus chapter 14, verse 10, the Bible says, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes. And I better lift up these glasses. Hold on. Oh, yeah, now I can lift up my eyes. Here we go. The children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And when they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, thou hast, thou, thou hast taken us away to die in the wilderness. Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. I got to deal with that. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you this day. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, <laughs> and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. 
and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, beh and, and I behold, I will harden the heart of Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all of his, all of his hosts, upon his uh, chariots and upon his horsemen, and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I have gotten me honor upon the Pharaoh, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen, and the angel of the Lord which went before the camp of Israel removed and went behind them, and the pillar of, of the cloud went, uh, went from, behold, uh, their face and stood behind them. And it came to pass, excuse me, and it came between the camp of the Egyptians and of the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto, unto them on the right hand and their left hand. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all the Pharaoh's uh, horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of the fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horses. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength. When the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all of the Pharaoh and all of uh, the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea there remained not so much as one of them can you say amen so to, today when we talk about who's next who's next who's next for deliverance who's next for deliverance now what's interesting Lady Ned is that there are 12 miracles here that the people of God need to know about. There are 12 miracles. Those of you who are taking notes, there are 12 miracles that take place in this passage before the people can come out. You all may know that the Lord called Moses to go back to get his people. He said, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. It's kind of interesting during this time of injustice, you know, they had put out the movie Harriet and all of that, and they called her Moses. And the reason why they called Harriet Tubman Moses is because after she was delivered, she went back and she started getting her people. And some of them she had to take at gunpoint because Deliverance don't feel good. We're in a time right now where everyone is looking for justice, everyone is looking for peace, everybody's looking for equality, but equality costs something. And what I'm afraid of is that some of these people that are yelling out justice, justice, are not willing to do the work for justice, justice. I mean, if you want justice, justice, you gotta vote. Now, I can, I can stop, I can drop the mic right there. If you want justice, justice, you got to vote. But guess what? Whatever you vote for, you got to live with it. Come on. You got to live with it. You know, and, and I, got, I got a feeling that some people are going to go to the box for their mayors and for their senators and for their congresspeople, and they're not really watching these congresspeople and these senators. Because let me tell you something. Presidents come and go. Some of these senators and some of these congresspeople have been in office for 40 years. 40 years saying the same thing. 40 years, we gonna help this and that. 
their whole life, they ain't never held a job. I got to preach now. They ain't never held a job, ain't never worked nowhere, ain't never opened up a business. So it's easy for them to try to control the masses because they're trying to keep their position. Mm -hmm. They're not going to vote in a way that gets them out of office. They're going to say whatever they got to say to hold their position. Mm -hmm. But God ain't that way because you can't vote God in and vote God out. So when God speaks, he's the only one without bias that can say what he got to say. God's word don't care about your feelings. See, God don't care that you cry. God, God, don't, God don't care that you're going to cry at his word. God's word is his word. Why? Because you can't vote him out. Because even right now, watch this now, even right now there's a hurricane stirring up that's coming up the Mexican Gulf, Gulf Coast. So in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of injustice, in the middle of protests, now we've had Pentecost, and now a hurricane is stirring. Hurricane didn't ask our permission, say, wait a minute, I want to wait for y'all to get done protesting, and then here I come. That's not the way it works. Because God is moving us right along towards the rapture. And he says, when you see the signs of these times, look up for your redemption, draw it nigh. So here are the 12. Now, now listen to this. The first one is Aaron's rod. The Lord allowed for Aaron and Moses to go right into the throne room of Pharaoh and let him know that God's power is the ultimate power. Now, now this was important for Moses's and Aaron's growth because they had to learn how to confront the status establishment of power at that time and not be afraid. You see, what, what's happening now is I think a lot of Christians are losing their Christianity right now mm -hmm. because they're running and hiding and they're ducking up under all of these under umbrellas. What, what I'm thinking, because I'm thinking, well, I don't even know what good is it for me to be your pastor if you're listening to the newsman. What, what you need me for? If you're going to listen to the word of man, listen to the word of man. But I'm telling you, all of this is a setup to try to shut down the church. I'm, I'm telling you that. Now, you say, you say, well, I, I, I listen to, to news anchor whoever. News anchor whoever is worried about his job. Right. He trying to gas you up so that he can get ratings. The good thing about the preacher, man, I ain't got to worry about ratings. Because God is going to hold me accountable if I don't preach the word the way he wants me to. Absolutely. So I ain't worried about ratings. You, you can rate me low. Don't, don't like it. Don't like it, share if you don't want to. But guess what? That don't mean it ain't liked and shared in heaven. So he has to have the errands rod. Then he has the water made into blood. Then the frogs get produced. Then the lice. Then the flies. Then the moraine. Then the boils. Then the thunder. Then the locusts. Then the darkness. And finally, you have the death of the firstborn. Okay, what, here, here's my point, babe. Egypt went through multiple plagues allowed, and in this case, sent by God. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Israel was also in Egypt. I need you guys to stay with me here. Egypt was holding Israel hostage. You would have thought that the Lord would have took Israel out first and then punished Egypt. He didn't do it that way. He said, the children of God are going to have to go through too. I'm going to protect you though while you go through. And whoever is still remaining is going to have the ability now to move into deliverance. In Joel, he puts it this way. I'm going to allow for the locust to come, the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the caterpillar to come and eat up. And whatever the one doesn't eat up and leave behind, I'm going to have the next one eat up. Right now, the Lord is purging. He's allowing for all of the plagues to now set us up for deliverance. Talk to me a little bit, babe. 
why in the world would the Lord cause the church to go through the same thing the world is going through? Why, why, I mean, why would he do that? I mean, I think it's because we need endurance. I mean, because there's worse to come. Mm. Right. And so we absolutely need endurance. I mean, w what is the old saying that you can't have a testimony without the test? Mm. Right. So as God is kind of shaking some things up, we are beginning to see like who we really are and how much we actually need our great God. Mm. Right. And so that's why it's so important that we continue to fast, that we continue to pray. Right. I mean, these two, I mean, th these are staples you know, for the Christian. Yeah. Prayer and fasting. We shouldn't be doing anything without praying and w without fasting because that's how we get the information that we need as Christians to be able to move forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, so I'm, I'm with you on the shakeup because the Lord sends these plagues, right? And the children of Israel had to deal with the frogs too. The children of Israel had to deal with the lice too. Mm -hmm. The children of God had to deal watching people with boils too. But, but, but wait a minute though. It made them have to be in a stay order. See, what's interesting is that we're on a stay right now, right? We, we just, we, we're on a stay right now. But the stay essentially has allowed for the children of God to get closer to God, those who will be saved has allowed us to get closer to God because we have to go through as well. He said, he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Now, I know everybody out there bragging about they saved. Every church, every church person right now who kind of like Jesus, all these people ain't saved, but they all, if they kind of like Jesus, they saved. Okay, well, the Bible didn't just say saved now. You got to be saved to be saved. He that endureth to the end shall be saved, mm -hmm. which means if you fall off the wagon at the end of your life, that means you wasn't saved. So that, that means you wasn't saved. You see, he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So the other part of the Christian walk that sometimes we don't tell you about is that you have to endure through trials. Absolutely. You can't let the trial take you out. Yeah. Somebody listening under the sound of my voice, you letting the trial take you out. You can't let that trial take you out. You can't let the principality take you out. I'm looking right into the camera. You got to endure. You got to mm -hmm. get up and dust yourself off and move again. Yeah, I mean, th this is not a cakewalk. You know, I was having a conversation with my nephew, um, who is um, a, a new convert. You know, he, he just, I mean, just, just got the Holy Ghost, thanks be to God. So, but he was saying that he thought that, you know, once he got saved, things were going to naturally just start to, um, like, scale off. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, no, baby. <laughs> Oh, no, it's like, because now you got a target on your back. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So there are things that we have to do. God has given us the ability to be able to do it through, you know, through the power of the Holy Ghost. But it's like there are certain things that we have to take off. We have to strip off. And it's not going to be easy because we like it. We're accustomed to it. it. It comes very natural for us to be the way that we are. And so, again, I'm going to keep saying it because I'm telling you, prayer and fasting yes. will help yes. get this Prayer stuff off of you. I mean, because it's like, we like this stuff. Yes. You know, yes. All, all, we love in it. And so it's going to help us to rid ourselves of these things so that we can love what he loves and hate what he hates. Okay, so, so now let's, let's get to the text, though, because I, I want to kind of bring the context. Because right now we're, we're protesting, right? Because we want justice. Now, this man, I, I said it at 8.30 service, but I want to give some people some clearer context. I think it's being missed in the conversation. This is not just about the man being a white man. This also is about police brutality mm -hmm. and the protection culture that's among police. But by the way, every group got protection culture. Black folk got protection culture. Oh, oh, absolutely. Because we don't riot in the streets when we shooting each other. It's a protection culture. And the problem with the protection culture, you end up harboring immoral behaviors and people and things in your community. You know, I, I, I see it where I brought it up this morning, I'll say it again. When the Catholic Church allowed those priests 
to continue to be priests that were messing with children. All of us, because the media really pushed it too. I was praying for them, but the media was pushing it. Somebody needs to be held accountable. So they wanted the Pope, to, everybody to go to jail, right? Okay, that's fair. And they sued the Catholic Church. Okay, that's fair. Well, what about in this instance? George Floyd was murdered. So now we got the person that murdered him, right? So they said he gonna have second degree murder. But then you have the other cops who stood by looking. Okay, they in jail. And everybody is satisfied with that. And I'm saying I ain't satisfied with that because this officer had 18 offenses against him, right. which means that the police chief, and I know he, he black, and I, you know, I don't attack black folk. I try to be nice, but I, I don't, it don't matter. The police chief knew about this. The commissioner knew about this. The, the woman that talked like she loved black people so much, or was a Corbish or whatever, so she got some name, um, that was running for president. Y'all look her up. Uh, she was running. She, that's her district. So how did, you, how did you allow this officer to have 18 offenses against him and he kept on working? The club owner, he works at a club. Even the club owner said, oh yeah, he was very aggressive towards African Americans. So listen, they want these four cops to be the scapegoat. Mm -hmm. But they are the pawns. I'm trying to bring everybody to it. D, you got to hear me here. They pawns. They pawns. Trust me on this. They pawns. There's a congressman attached to that who needs to be held accountable. So as we talk about now, everyone talking about, we don't want police at all. Now, I don't know what got that in your mind. I, I, no. That ain't what I mind, because now you're going to make me have to get a shotgun and be standing out in front of my house. Stop that. So stop all of that Marxist. That's that Marxist stuff, by the way. That's called Marxist stuff. So, so, so here's the thing, though. Look at the scripture. Y'all drop your eyes down to the scripture. The Bible says in verse 10, and when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Now, I gotta, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching this message to give you natural and spiritual. Do y'all think Pharaoh gonna let them go? Pharaoh ain't gonna let them go. So to all of you guys who's crying out, crying out to the government, crying out to these agencies, you think a system that is emboldened by your persecution is going to let you go. I'm wondering what's wrong with the children of God. I feel on fire this morning. You think the person that makes money from the jails that put you in the jail, that that person is going to let you go? You think the person that profits off of your children having a poor education, you think they're going to let you go? And I'm an educator. Do, do you really think that the system itself is going to let you go? Pharaoh, now I'm using him as the system. Pharaoh ain't going to let you go. Let me tell you what Pharaoh did. Pharaoh let him go for a moment, and guess what he did? He went back to try to get him back. So you need a God to guide you. <laughs> Glory, I feel like preaching. It's something wrong with the internet back there. The internet is messed up. Well, you better get ready to come to the organ because I'm about to preach. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. And Mother Wiley, you listening on this? That you you've been old. You've been you you've been around long enough to know, and wise enough to know that these kind of things they don't just let you go. They will find a way to destroy your community. And the Bible says they cried to the Lord though. And in verse 11 it says, and and watch with the people. The people got the slave mentality. The people said, didn't we tell you there wasn't enough graves in Egypt that you would just bring us out here so we can die? I want to speak to everyone out there that's acting like America is in the worst place it's ever been. No, there was something worse than this. Our ancestors would roll over in their grave listening to us act like them being hosed down in the street was worse than what we're going through them having separate bathrooms 
and places to eat was worse than we are now. Y'all eat wherever y'all want to eat right now. And somebody look at you dirty and you get your little feelings hurt running out talking about racist. But I got news for you. Our ancestors had it worse than us. We have come a long way as a nation. And you ought to thank God for that. But what you also need to understand is that Pharaoh has to be destroyed. And when I say Pharaoh, I ain't even talking about the person. I'm talking about the system, the Egyptian system that would have you in bondage working for nothing, by the way. <laughs> People want to talk about equal rights. Working for nothing. So they want our kids to get a degree, get a, get a high school diploma. I got a Holy Ghost girl back there. They want you to get your diploma, but not have a purpose. See, that's what they want. They want you to say, oh, look at the, the, the black graduation rate is going up. Like that's so wonderful. Because you can spell and because you can write. That, that's, that ain't wonderful. That should be expected. Right. The fact that you got a high school diploma. The question is, do you know your purpose? Because if you know your purpose, that's the only way for you to be blessed by God and for you to bless your community. You see, when we are all operating in our purpose, now there's more voices that can fight up against that Pharaoh Egyptian system when it tries to come back and haunt us. Come on. Your thought is like and share. That's your saying. Like oh, and share, like, like and share, share. Like, like and share. share. Mine is fast and pray, fast and pray, fast and pray, because we'll find our purpose. Oh, yes. Right? So, I mean, listen, if we have... Certain laws have not been written yet because you have not written them. Woo. Oh, that's big, babe. Do, do you see what I'm saying? We have a purpose. If born-again believers were asking God, mm. seeking God about what our purpose is, mm. that does include how I should vote, mm -hmm. And, and, and stop waiting for the presidential election to vote. <laughs> I mean, because, I mean, if that's what you're doing, you didn't waited too late, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, w what about all of the other things that the offices that need to be voted for? But if we're fasting and praying about that, and then asking God what our purpose is, then we would have the ability to change some of these things that need to be changed. So, as you say like and share, I say fast and pray. Amen. And, you know, that Aubrey incident... Watch this, Grace. Grace, I know you're working, but watch this. I need you to listen to me. Listen to this. Aubrey, the Aubrey kid got shot. He got shot by a man who said he was making a citizen's arrest. And he said, because he started wrestling with me, then I shot him. Okay. But, but what, the, what some of us don't realize is that the district attorney had already decided not to prosecute because that actually happened over two months ago. So the district attorney is a voted on position. So the people had voted in somebody who when they looked at that case, they said, oh, that ain't no case there. There's no there there. The boy died, that's too bad. He shouldn't have been trying to rob. So it took for it to hit the national media mm -hmm. for them to finally get some justice. So your vote does matter. Okay, I got. know I got to finish up. We, I, I let the. I don't, I want. I don't want to be like Pharaoh and not let y'all go. Okay, but but watch this in, in verse thirteen. And Moses said unto the people, "Listen to the words of Moses. If you ain't gonna listen to me, listen to Moses. Fear ye not. Stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will show to you this day." For Egyptians, whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more. Okay, so, so this is what we got to understand. Moses attacks fear right away. Because the thing that has to be attacked is fear. If I'm fearful, I'm not expecting our seniors to be out there with signs protesting. The young protest has always been the young, always has been. You know what I'm saying? Our seniors have served their time. They've already done what they need to do. And they've given us a life that we can either throw it away or walk in it. But what's, what's important here is that he says, fear not, stand still. In other words, do not move from this place, and then you're going to see. Notice, 
fear not, stand, and then you'll see. The people of God have to be rooted and grounded in the tenets, in the tenets of Christianity. We can't allow for injustice, protests, plagues to stop us from being Christian. What has hurt my heart is that it's almost like all of the preaching, all of the teaching, it goes out the window as soon as something happens. Right. And that's kind of rattled me a little bit. Because I'm like, wait a minute. We've been in church long enough, heard the word long enough to be able to still keep our faith even through a pandemic and keep our faith even through injustice and keep our faith even through all of the wows and now this hurricane is on its way. The Lord sent us Pentecost right in the middle of this so that he could refresh us so that we can move forward. Now, now let, me, let me finish this up because here, here's my big, this is the big other message. He says the Lord will fight for you, but then he tells Moses what he needs to do. The Lord will fight for you, but there's something you need to do. So when, 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 we, when we go and say, we want justice, we want, you know, other people are yelling out. Wait a minute, there's something you need to do, though. I saw a beautiful picture. I put it up on my Facebook. It was an Asian young lady. She had a sign that said, Black Lives Matter. She was just standing there like a statue, just holding it up. She wasn't encountering nobody. She just had a sign. I said, this is very beautiful, very beautiful that all ethnicities, people are coming around this idea that Black Lives Matter. But the fact that I got to tell you that, <laughs> I'm shocked that I got to tell you that. Especially these people that's rolling up into quote unquote Christian churches. You, 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 go, to, you go to church every week. How did you, how did you, did I need to convince you that a black life matters? So, 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 so he, 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 here's, here's, the, here's the big. The miracle here is not that the sea opened up. That's what I used to preach as the miracle. The miracle is that Moses trusted God so that he can see the miracle. I'm understanding more and more why the Lord said these people have a hard heart. The miracle is that I would have enough faith in God to trust him. Mm -hmm. when, when, you, when you have faith, that's a miracle. Yes. Because everything that you see is pointing against what you believe. Right. And sometimes we think the miracle was in the healing of the tumor. But I'm saying the miracle is that the person with the tumor believed that they was going to be healed. Because they've already seen enough people die from the tumor. Absolutely. So the fact that they could still go to the doctor's appointment and say, I trust God, mm. is a miracle in and of itself. The fact that in the midst of all of this turmoil, people are still getting online, studying their word, listening on phone, that's a miracle in and of yeah. itself because some yes, people yes, have yes. fallen by the wayside. And I, and I don't want to get into that, but I've seen a lot of my peers fall by the wayside. Mm. I'm even watching preachers. It's like preachers gone wild. It's, it don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? It's like they've completely lost the fact that they've been called to the gospel. You've been called to the gospel, sir, if you're listening to me. And that gospel ought to mean something. And everything that you've been preaching to your people about faith, you got to step into that too. And you can't be taking on all these other ideologies while your people die. In fact, one of the scriptures I was going to throw out today, and it's in uh, Galatians, he says, Paul says, if we or angels come back and preach anything else than what you first believed, let them be accursed. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm encouraging the people of God who are not in Bethesda, but I'm talking about all over. If your pastor go rogue, if the minister go rogue, don't you go rogue. That's right. Remember, what, he, what he taught you was the word of God. Stand on the word of God. Because the only thing that's going to work is the word of God. And as you said, fasting and praying, fast praying, word of God. Those are the only things that's going to keep you. I'll give you the last thoughts, and then I'm going to pray. So, babe, I just, I want the church to be 
encouraged and know that there is hope in our Father. He, he gives us the hope that we need and that we need to let our voice be known and loud. I mean, for a lot of us, our Facebook pages, that, that's our voice. And we have to be very careful about what we're posting and what we're sharing because people are looking at us as children of light. And so I really do believe that we're gonna be held responsible for what we put on our Facebook post because that is a way of evangelizing. And so are we saying the right things? Mm -hmm. Did we pray before we post it? Did we fast? Did we ask God, like, is this what you want me to say? Because I know I got at least 100 people who are looking at this, yeah. right? And so we really have to offer people hope. And so for the church, listen, be encouraged. Continue to stand on the word of God. Continue to stand on all that you have been taught to this day. It's like, because we were being prepared for this day, you know, and just to remember to look up because our redemption is drawing nigh. Hallelujah. So what is in your hand this morning? Maybe I should have called this, what's in your hand? And I'm using this as a symbol. Where has the Lord planted you to work? What kind of skill do you have? What kind of talent do you have? What's in your hand? Whatever's in your hand, the Lord wants to use it to bring deliverance. He says, I'm gonna do my part. I'm gonna fight for you. But I need you to trust me enough yes. that in order for the door to open up, you got to trust what's in your hand, that it'll work for you. Mm -hmm. Dear Gracious Father, I bless you and thank you. Because your people are already blessed because you died for them. You rose Lord for them. God. The Lord God, you, you, you were resurrected for them. You, yes, you gave them the Holy Spirit. And now we come praying, Lord, still for peace. And the Lord God, we pray for justice in the land, but we pray that you would turn the hearts of men, God, though. God. The hearts of men are desperately wicked, Lord. Jesus. You told us that already. Hallelujah. So we pray for salvation to people. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That people would get saved. Thank you, God. Lord, not, not, not change their mind because of a law. Not change their mind because of some policy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But change their mind because of you. Thank you, God. The Lord God, we want true justice. We want Thank true you, peace, God. which yes, only Jesus. comes from you. Yes, Lord. It don't come from these elected people. Jesus. The Lord God, they, they, they're, they're just as wicked as the rest. Jesus. So now Jesus. we have to do our God trust in you. Thank you, Lord. And we come asking, Lord, that you would give us the insight, the wisdom, yes. and the knowledge yes. 